and distribution. Okay. Um, cooperation. I love it. Outside of that, yeah. So, what was the question you had, Jack? 34. 34. Here we go. Number 34. Calculate delta E for each of the following. So, specific questions or just like kind of just want to see how this is done? Well, honestly, we have to answer that first. Okay. Is it like 41, 31, 47? 34A? Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Yes, no, no. is 41. B is 35 and C is 47. Okay, this one is easy. D? Yeah, it's D is 47. 34 D. What? 34 D? When the surroundings do work on the system, right? Yes. W just has to be greater than zero, right? So that's going to be what? A. A. Okay. That's just going to be A. Because there has W has to be greater than zero in order to make that happen. Yes. Number 41. So the number 41, you've got to really kind of read this to get your start. So it says, consider a mixture of air and gasoline vapor in a cylinder with a piston. The original volume is 40 centimeters cubed. If the combustion of this mixture releases 950 joules of energy, to what volume will the gases expand against a constant pressure of 650 torr? If all the energy is converted into work. So on 41, they are saying that Q equals W because all the energy is being converted into work. So, and they gave us, that is 950 joules, right? It's releasing, so that's equal to negative 950 joules. Are you okay with what I've done so far? No. Okay, so I'm gonna take my negative 950 joules. I'm gonna use my fancy little conversion, consmersion, so 101.3, I don't know why I said conversion, because it sounded fun. Joules is one liter times atmosphere. And that gave me negative 9.38 liters atmospheres, which is not a super great number, right? Well, that's my work. So W equals negative P triangle V. So that's, this is my work, right? That's my work. So I'm going to have um, negative 9.38 liters times atmospheres is equal to pressure, which is what? Well, negative, sorry, it'd be to negative parentheses. 650 torr, 650 torr like divided by 760 torr, right? Because I have to convert that to ATM. Oh, this, um, is this has to be ATM liters for it to work? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it That's does. Has to be ATM liters Dang. times VF because um, delta, v. delta V minus point <laughs> o four o liters. <clears throat> so you have to convert your centimeters cubed to milliliters, which is the same. 40 milliliters is 0 0.040 liters. Sure, that would work. So you ended up with 11.0 liters. 11.0 liters for number 41. Next one. Anything before 44? Okay, 24. We'll get to 51 eventually. Number 44. One mole of H2O gas at 1 ATM and 100 degrees Celsius occupies a volume of 30.6 liters. 
When one mole of H2O gas is condensed to one mole of H2O liquid at one ATM, 100 degrees Celsius, 40.66 kilojoules of heat is released. Did anybody run the heart and ghoul this weekend? Nobody? The registration is 40 bucks for late fee. Ooh. You yeah. didn't run it, Maggie? Oh. Didn't do it, uh, expensive. Don't run it. Yeah. 40 bucks, that is. Well, that was for the 10K. I think the 5K was 20. Okay. Why would you run a 10K? Dude, um, we weren't going to run the 10K. Ty and I are about to do the 10K. <laughs> <laughs> You're running six miles. You guys asked me if I wanted to. So, a 44. Um, we have essentially H2O gas, right? Yes. Going to H2O liquid. And we know that triangle E equals Q plus W. And they gave me Q, right? So Q equals what? Negative. On 44. Negative. Why negative? Uh, I don't remember what the book said. Because, because it says heat is released. So that is uh, A. I'm, I'm like flipping those. It's Q. Oh. If heat is released, it should be an exothermic. It's negative. Right? right? So Q is, that's a Q. Negative 40.66 kilojoules. The sign is literally the first one. Negative 40.66 kilo, kilojoules. And we know that W equals negative P triangle V. So let's first get our volume of one mole of H2O liquid. It is not. So I have 1.0 <laughs> 1. oh, 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 moles of H2O liquid times one mole of H2O liquid is going to be to 18.015 grams of H2O. And they gave me a density on this one, right? Nine. Which is 0.996 grams of H2O for every one centimeter cubed. And we know that one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter, right? Yes? Yeah. And do we want this in milliliters? Liters. We want it in liters, right? So I'm going to say that there is a thousand milliliters in one liter. So multiply that through, and what did you get? Like 0 0.0181, does that sound right? <coughs> That's what I got. Yeah. So this gave me 0 0.0181 liters. 0 0.0181 liters. So that is my final volume, right? Did they give me an initial volume? Yeah. They sure did. 30.6, right? So now I have everything I need. So W equals negative 1.00 ATM. There's my negative P times 0 0.0181 liters minus 30.6 liters. And that gives you 30.6 liters atmospheres but I don't want 30.6 liters atmospheres I want to know joules so this is just a lot of conversions so I'm going to take my 30.6 liters atmospheres and I know that for every one liter atmosphere there is 101.3 joules Wait, the story for the water doesn't actually do anything because sig digs made it still 30.6. I mean, I know. It, with the sig digs, it doesn't really change. So, and there is 1,000 joules in one kilojoule because I need this to be in kilojoules to work, make my delta E work out. Wear costumes tomorrow? Ah, uh, yeah, you guys can wear costumes tomorrow. Do you guys know that? I think it's a big couple costumes. Yes. Jawa and Megan, what are you guys going to do? I don't know. They know they're our cooking. Megan's cooking stuff. Uh -huh. She's got ideas. 100%. Maybe. We already did the bunny. No. Sine squared, cosine squared. No. 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 That's such a no. 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 I'm not doing it. No. That's such a need. No. What about uh, A squared plus B squared? No. Sine. 
No, science Jack squared has Pythagorean theorem. Jack oh, has maybe. this running joke because sine squared plus cosine squared is one. Together they're one. And so Jack has oh. been saying this for 3,000 years. I bet you might get bonus points in math for doing that. What? I don't think Gallagher. Bonus points in math if you did that. I don't think Gallagher would have done that. I don't think Gallagher would have done that. You guys have the same class. You guys have the same class. I got 3.10 kilojoules. No, not pressure. 3.10 kilojoules. You know what? We never did so. Who knew? So. I finally have kilojoules and kilojoules that I can add together. Triangle E equals negative 40.66 kilojoules plus 3.10 kilojoules. And you end up with negative 37.56 kilojoules for your final answer. So that was literally just converting. And with Sig Diggs, you're right, Joe. I didn't really do much. But we still did it. We still did it. All right, 47D. 47 47 delta. That one makes sense. Oh, yeah. 47D. Okay. This is not a math question, is it? No. No. Okay. Let's just talk about all of them. 47D tripped me up last year, too. Oh, it's because, because it's... Because on the, uh, it's with the, on the thermal test. Test. It's like system versus time. 47A, the solution gets colder. What did you say? Endo. Endothermic. <laughs> oh, wait. So is this just the general rule? If temperature increases, it's going to be exothermic, and if temperature decreases, endothermic? If, if the reaction, right? If the reaction gets colder, it's endothermic, right? Okay. 47B, natural gas is burned. What did you say? It's exothermic. It is released, right? Exothermic. 47C. When concentrated H2SO4 is added to water, the solution gets very hot. Exothermic. Exothermic. So should we think of terms of the system or the environment? Does that make sense? Well, this is talking about the solution, right? So, On, like D, so D, water is boiled in a tea kettle. Talking about what's let off or what? What, what are you doing in this situation? You're, putting heat into you're the boiling water, water, right? In order to boil water, what must you do? Put in heat. Put in energy. Therefore, it is endothermic. endothermic. It's it is endothermic. Because it's taking in heat from it. Correct. In order to <laughs> boil water, you must put energy in. in endothermic. Yes. It would definitely not feel cold if you touched it. Correct. That's tricky. All right. That's a little tricky, but you are putting energy in on that one. Yes, 51. So on 51, consider the combustion of propane, and they give me a balanced equation with a delta H. Assume all the heat in example 6.3 comes from the combustion of propane. What must the mass of propane be burned to furnish this amount, assuming heat transfer is 50%? So the first thing you had to do was go back, right? So I'm going to go back to... 6.3, and what was that? 1.3 times 10 to the 8th? Yeah. Right? I had so I have 1.3 times 10 to the 8th joules on that other page. So I'm just I'm concerned. That was the problem. That was the heat given out. That wasn't the net energy change. Right. But we're focusing on the heat that was Correct. given out. Correct. Times, I only get 60 joules for every 100 joules. So there's my 60%. You just divided by 0.6. You can do that too. And this gives me 2.2 times 10 to the 8th joules. I'm not done yet. Now it's asking me to convert that to grams of propane. So I'm going to take my 2.2 times 10 to the 8th joules times, in my problem on 51, they say that for every 2, 2, to one kilojoules, you have how many moles of C3H8? One. You have one mole of C3H8. Wait, that's joules to kilojoules. No. Wait. wait. That's joules, sorry. No. Oh, uh, wait. Uh-oh. I think I do a conversion. You just put 
go to Julesburg, go to kill Julesburg. Right. You just do one thousand damage, one kill of Julesburg. What if I just make it to? I could just make this two point two times ten to the well, fifth or sixth. Yeah, it should be well, fifth. Well, can I just change that to the fifth? Yeah. Can we just can we do the extra step out? Okay, just fine. Do the set. <laughs> two point two <laughs> times ten to the eighth <laughs> joules <laughs> times there is a thousand joules in one kilojoule. And now we have two thousand two hundred and twenty one kilojoules for every one mole of C you're right, let's do it. It's better just to do it. Is that yeah. not negative just because we don't have to put the negative sign because we know it's being yeah, the negative's not super important here because uh -huh. also we can't get a negative mass. That's, yeah. That's so, and then one mole of C3H8 is going to be approximately, what, 36 plus 8, 44. Um, 44.09 kilograms. 44.09 grams of C3H8. So on this, I ended up getting... Four point four times ten to the third. Did anybody get that? Yeah, I get that. Four thousand four hundred. So yes. That four point four times oh. ten to the third grams of C three H eight. That's forty four point oh nine. Four point four times ten to the third grams of C three H eight. And that was fifty one. Is fifty two similar? Fifty two. Yes. Would be very similar. On 52, you're starting out with grams. And you're just going to You'll take it to moles, right? Okay. You'll stoic step it. Take it to moles, then go to your delta H. On B, you'll piv nerd it to moles. And then take it to your delta H. But you'll have to convert Tor and Celsius to ATM and Kelvin. Do you care if we write for an answer like this many kilojoules were released, or do you want it to be negative? Don't care. Uh, can you do 56 and just show the answer? Either one. Yeah, we got time. 56. 8. 56. Are you waiting for the game? 56. Are you waiting for the game? 56. Which one do you got? Two. Two. 58. 56. Yes. Do you have a 58? 58. 58. No. But no, I said 8.9. I feel like we have time. Let's just do it. So here's 56. The specific heat capacity of silvers is this. Calculate the energy required to raise the temperature of 150 grams of silver from 273 to 298. So 56A, right? 56A, we are given a heat capacity, and I need to do a little bit of math, right? So Q equals SMAT. So Q equals, that's going to be your 0.24. So 0.24 joules per gram degree Celsius times your mass, which is going to be 150 grams. Is that mass? Is it grams? grams because okay. it's mass yep. and your change in temperature is going to be what 25 mm -hmm. yes <laughs> what was that Jacqueline. so you mean that the mass graph that would be nope. <laughs> no we'll talk about it 25 kelvin <laughs> yes right <laughs> yeah. yep Jacqueline, did you get 25. Well, that's the same as degrees Celsius. Right? 25 degrees Celsius. Because you would agree that 25 Kelvin is 25 degrees Celsius. Oh, right, because it's Well, I mean, your units need to cancel out. But a degree Celsius is a degree Kelvin. So 25 degrees Celsius. So on A, I got 900. So, but let's take digs, it should be 9.0. 10 to the second joules. So that was A. B, calculate the energy required to raise the temperature of one mole of silver by one degree Celsius. So on this one, 
I have 0.24, this is just going to be a little bit of stoic again, joules over a degree Celsius times a gram. So, I just did stoic. I know that one mole of AG is 107.9 grams of AG. If I multiply that through, grams will cancel out, giving me joules per degree Celsius mole, which is a molar heat capacity. Okay, so that was just kind of weird. <coughs> so multiply that through, and I got 26 joules per mole degree Celsius. Could have done that too. Yeah, because you do the not using just like a mole as the like as the mass. Could have done that. Yep. Could have done that as well. So what'd you do for your change in temperature? To do this math. One degree Celsius. What? One degree Celsius. Yeah. That's fine. Yep, so you can do it like this, or you can put it in this mat, you'll get the same thing. And then C, it takes 1.25 kilojoules of energy to heat a sample of pure silver from 12 to 15.2, calculate the mass. So on C, I'm solving for M, right? Yes. So M equals Q divided by S triangle T. Does that look good? Yeah. So M equals, on this one, we have bring that to 1,250 <laughs> joules, right? Yeah. Divided by S, it's still... 0.24, right? 0.24 joules per gram degree Celsius times change in temperature is 3.2. 3.2 degrees Celsius. So sig dig wise, you would have two sig digs. Yes. Check your units, joules divided by joules per gram degree Celsius, that'll cancel out the joules. Degree Celsius on the bottom times degree Celsius on the top will cancel out Celsius. The inverse of grams is grams, so this is gonna leave it in grams. On 56, you should have got 1.6 times 10 to the third grams of silver. 1.6 times 10 to the third grams of silver. So that was 56C. Next one. Uh, we got rid of 61. We got rid of 61. That one is just silly calculations. It's like a huge system of equations. Okay, so 58 for the molar heat capacity. Uh huh. Well, let's, let's figure out if it's like full engine. So on 58, we have 585 joules of energy to raise the temperature of that many grams of mercury from 20 to 53.5. Calculate the specific heat and the molar heat. Did you get your specific heat? Did you get part one of 58? Oh, I just didn't do it. Oh, you just didn't do it? No. So on 58, I need to solve for S, which is gonna be, once again, equal to Q so over M delta T. 585 equals 1.25. So this is equal to they gave me 585, right? Yep. So that's 585 joules divided by mass, which is 125.6 grams. Change of temperature is 33.5 degrees Celsius. So that gave me 0.139 joules for gram degree Celsius. So that's my specific heat capacity. Now I need my molar heat capacity. So I just have to convert that to moles. Your so gram. my point one three nine, yep, oh. joules over grams times degree Celsius times, to cancel out my grams, I have 200.6 grams in one mole of HG. That cancels out grams. That leaves me joules per mole degree Celsius, and I got 
joules per mole degree Celsius. You can still do it the other way. Sure. Yeah. You do the other way too. So that was 58. Is that 200.6? Yes. Do we just have to go up to 64 today? Yes. So tomorrow I'll take questions on one, two, three, four, five, six, at the last 13. So is 64 equals 9? 64? Oh. It's going to be Q loss equals Q gain for 64. So that's just like the lab. So you guys can use the rest of the time. Yeah, I can do 52. 52. Go back page to my work. So on 52A. Consider the enthalpy change for the following. One gram of methane is burned. So I'm going to start out with my 1.00 grams of CH4 times, that is 16.04 grams of CH4 in one mole of CH4. And one mole of CH4 is what they gave me, negative 891 kilojoules. Doesn't make sense where I got that negative 891 from. So on A, I got negative 55.4 kilojoules. Okay, I have a question. So if it were to have like a coefficient of 2 on the CH4, how would that change? You'd put a 2 down here. You'd have to include it okay, okay. on your stoic step. Yeah. Like there was one question when you were literally just like looking at your coefficients and dividing it by the coefficients. Yeah. Yes. Because it's per mole. And then B. I know that N is equal to PV over RT. So this is going to be, what is 740 divided by 760? It was 0.974 atmospheres. So this is going to be 0.974 ATM times my volume, which is 1,000 liters over 0 0.08, right? The fun thing, 206 liters atmospheres over moles Kelvin, times temperature, which is 25 plus 273, that's 298, right? 298 Kelvin. So that should give you 39.8 moles of CH4. So I will take that, my 39.8 moles of CH4 times one mole of CH4 is negative 891 kilojoules, which gives you negative 3.55 times 10 to the fourth kilojoules. So what's that? That's hot. Or I guess you could say that's a lot released. It would feel very hot. It would feel very, very hot. Cool? So make sure you get the rest of those worked for tomorrow. And I will work all the rest of those out. We'll go low to high. It's been working out. I don't know. I saw a lot of people watched the YouTube videos of me working the problems. So... It's usually whatever you guys ask, the next period asks different questions, so I've been like working them all out. So. Okay. I just need to rewatch.